product to hit the streets. Um, it's just come out now from Arcade Forge. So these are the same guys that have bought us the SLG 3000 uh, scanline generator, Sync Stripe, which is a sync cleaner, amongst other uh, sort of retro gaming or gaming devices or add-ons or uh, whatever you want to call it. Um, yeah, the latest hardware device they bought out, something called a uh, Ultimate SCART adapter, and it's this little uh, beauty here. I've been lucky enough to get a review uh, version of this product, so I have decided to do a video on this, a YouTube video, to explain uh, what it does, uh, what it's for, and and hopefully to give some 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 sort of demo information really as regards to um, and the results with this device. So, so what is this device? I mean, I will go through it as regards doing close-ups on what it is and what it's and what it does as regards to the uh, the inputs, outputs, etc. Um, on first look, it does look um, sort of very similar to Sync Strike, which is the product that Arcade Forge. Uh, produce that is effectively a sink cleaner. The actual look of that is fairly similar because it's it's the same sort of footprint, but it's a totally different device. This is totally different. So, so the ultimate scar that's what's it for? I suppose in in simplistic terms, or 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 the main reason that, it, uh, that this was produced was to allow people to have uh, something like a PC. Um, uh, that can run emulators and MAME. Sorry, emulators and yeah, yeah, emulators and MAME. And there could be all different uh, types of emulators, you know, uh, things like uh, Super Nintendo emulator, uh, Mega Drive emulator. Set it up on on a PC platform, so it will actually output a 15 kilohertz signal, a low res signal, and actually feed that signal into a domestic CRT TV. A CRT TV will enable you to have a low res uh, video signal displayed. It will give you your, your natural scan lines if you're using or if, you, if you're giving it a uh, progressive signal, 240p signal in effect. Um, so, what this device enables you to do is simply to connect your PC to your uh, TV. So, why would you want to do that? Well, I've sort of, I've sort of said that in so many. Um, words really as regards to uh, a couple of the uh, uses for it. Say for instance you have main. Uh, it is possible if you set up main correctly and I'm not going to go into that in this video but if you set up main correctly you can use either a, a software application dependent on the type of video card you've got uh, to enable your video card to output a low resolution uh, signal to a TV. Um, you know anything below uh, 640 by 480 that software application is called Soft15 or you can buy a specific uh, graphics card that's uh, known as Arcade uh, VGA cards I've actually got both methods, I've tried both methods they uh, both work fine but uh, this basically gives you the ability then to have your PC set up as your emulator and to actually send that uh, video signal out to uh, your CRT TV and you get the uh, the proper original uh, resolution uh, reproduction that uh, you would have got in the arcade for instance um, and it looks absolutely awesome forget your scalers forget your SLG 3000s um, forget your main filters forget your main scanline overlays you can have your PC connected direct up to a CRT TV and it looks absolutely mint. It would be, for all intended purpose you're running the arcade um, hardware. Um, I know you're not you're emulating it but it it will look if you spend the time setting it up it looks exactly the same as what you would expect it to look like in the arcade. For stuff that's emulated sorry for for stuff that's emulated in main. That's 15 kilohertz. Um, uh, you can also set it up, uh, there are various versions of, of console emulators like the Mega Drive Super Nintendo that will also allow you to output a 15 kilohertz signal. 
So again, you can actually have an emulator on the PC connected to a CRT TV via one of these uh, doobries, and and you can be playing uh, Super Nintendo Mega Drive games, PC Engine games, in in their proper resolution with the scan lines, and it looks like the hardware. You probably wouldn't know it wasn't the hardware that was running the original hardware. So. Um, so this device enables you to do that. It is it is purely plug and play, so you don't have to do anything. You just need to connect your your VGA or your Diesel 15 from your PC into into the Diesel 15 on there, and you got a SCART output there. So you get a SCART lead that goes from there to your TV. You give it some power, uh, five volts. Uh, Bob your uncle fannies your out. It will work. Apart from apart from your emulators, you can actually use this device to to hook up to a CRTV your uh, consoles. Now uh, you might turn around and say right well, I can do that already absolutely but but one of the things that you can use this for as um, as the final link really to your TV is uh, it is possible with the right hardware to take a a 480i image from a console, it could be a PlayStation 2, uh, predominantly most of the titles on PlayStation 2 were 480i, um, or, or even up to more modern day consoles like the Xbox 360. An Xbox 360, uh, you can output SCART, so you could get your Cave uh, Dead on Patchy Die for Katsu and you can connect a SCART RGB lead to your Xbox 360, the output will be 480i. You can then feed that to a Sync Strike, and that goes from SCART to D-Sub 15. You take the D-Sub 15 and you take that through to a device like an Extron RGB interface that will uh, manipulate the, uh, the video signal and it will give you a pseudo uh, 240p output, but unfortunately that will be uh, via the BNC, so you go via BNC to uh, D sub 15. Uh, D sub 15 plugs into this and the scatter output from that goes uh, straight to the CRT TV. So uh, you can use that connection method to do that type of video conversion from 480i through to 240p for uh, PlayStation 2, for the Xbox, for the Xbox 360, for the, the N64, GameCube, so basically anything that outputs 480 you can get to 240 and you can actually uh, then get that 240p signal fed straight to a CRT TV. You're effectively de-interlacing it. So it, yeah, so, so that will allow you to do that as well. Um, I've done various tests and um, I'll put some information up on, on the Schmucks uh, forum against the thread that's going at the moment that's entitled uh, Ultimate SCART Adapter uh, for main PC and TVs. Like I say, it's not just for main, but that was one of the original reasons for this, but it can be used for a multitude of other reasons. I've tested it with uh, soft 15 kilohertz, works fine. I've tested it with an arcade VGA card, works fine. Uh, to a CRT TV. Um, I've tried Bane, works absolutely fine. I've tried Super Nintendo emulator, I've tried Mega Drive emulator, all in 15 kilohertz output mode, works absolutely fine. I did some testing as well to do with the 360 um, uh, via various methods to a CRT TV to get rid of the, of the interlaced effect. I perhaps won't show a demo of that, I've already done that already. Uh, this is just the this is just a way of connecting that to a CRTV, CRT TV. It does work, trust me. Um, that's probably about it, really. Um, so I'll cut some video explaining uh, the PCB, uh, what the inputs are, what the outputs are, what you do, what you can do, what you can't do, etc. And then I'll actually cut to some uh, some demo video of of this device all up and running with the various uh, bits of equipment that I've got. Right, so here we have a close-up of the uh, Ultimate SCART adapter. So if we look at what the uh, input to this uh, device is, it is that there. So, if I get that focused, 
it's not going to focus, apologise for that. But basically a D sub 15 in, so that will come from, if you're doing it via a, a main PC, then you'll have to take uh, the output from the PC and feed it into there. If your PC video card hasn't got a D sub 15 at the back of it, you can get a DVI to D sub adapter and then from the adapter to this. So that's uh, fairly straightforward to overcome. Uh, the output of the device is your SCART socket, which is there. So you would get a SCART lead uh, effectively to go from that to your TV. Uh, you're probably thinking, right, okay, how do I get audio to go to my TV? You've got RCA inputs. Now, obviously, you can't get audio to go through your D sub 15, so you have to attach audio another way. So you've got to try and get audio out of your console anyway. If you want to get it into your into your um, into your SCART socket and then into your TV, you have to feed uh, left and right uh, audio into uh, the PCB via these two uh, RCAs here, or phonos, whatever you want to call them. From the PC as well, you'd have to take your audio from your PC uh, via the speaker output on your, on your um, uh, audio card, for instance, or your headphone socket, or whatever, and whack it into uh, into these again. A pretty straightforward thing to do. You've got a power uh, input there, which is just a mini jack. Now, unlike the Sync Strike, you do have to power this. You don't get any power via the D sub 15. So you have to externally power this. It's only five volts. Doesn't need to be any great ampage. But basically, the power is to actually uh, power up the logic circuit, which is here, which does all the fancy stuff with the um, sync. It effectively takes your horizontal and vertical sync that's being picked up there. That's assuming that your PC is outputting horizontal and vertical. Some graphics card can some graphics cards can be set to actually just output composite sync so it doesn't need this circuit but it makes no difference um, it doesn't stop the thing from working but basically this circuit here is a logic circuit to effectively take horizontal and vertical sync which is what you normally associate with a D sub 15 input via a, a PC and that um, basically converts it into a composite sync signal or composite video sync signal, or composite sync, can't think what it does off the top of my head, but basically to a sync signal that your SCART uh, CRT TV can accept. Uh, something else on here is that you're able to actually change the uh, polarity of the sync. I'm not entirely sure of the of the use of that as regards to how how often that's relevant. Um, uh, for the purpose of my TV, it had to be uh, positive sync. If I change to negative sync, it doesn't work. And it looks like that the default there is actually on negative. But I'd assume that was those two pins. Oh, sorry. Uh, it was the M pin and the pin in, which is not on. It's actually on the positive one. But anyway, that's, <laughs> uh, that's the setting my TV works on. And it's fine. So I suspect there are some monitors that require a different sync feed I don't know but uh, once that's set that's normally fine so that is the device I mean it's it, it, you know it is compact and and it does do what it uh, says on the tin so I will now cut to some video and actually show you it working right first image then so this is my Sony TV and it's displaying the desktop uh, the Windows desktop it's Windows XP on this particular uh, PC that's connected to this. Uh, this is actually using an arcade VGA card. You'll notice that the screen split and it's uh, not all on the screen correctly. Uh, this is basically because this is an interlaced image in, in this particular resolution and it needs all the geometry changing. But I'm not going to go in and change all the geometry just to. Uh, the display of the Windows desktop correctly so uh, this is just to show you guys that this is Windows on on a Sony uh, CRT uh, TV so it's basically just showing that the 
Ultimate uh, SCAR adapter is working as it should do, but don't be alarmed by uh, the way that the screen looks. Uh, this is actually MAME now running from the PC, and we've got OutRun on here. If I should get a little bit closer, and you can see you've got all your scan lines on there. So this is actually displaying a proper uh, arcade resolution effectively. Um, uh, now there is some slight under scan, sorry over scan I should say, not under scan, over scan on here. Um, you will find with a number of of PCBs, well not PCBs, sorry, with, um, a number of ROMs that you're going to be playing under main that you will have to keep altering uh, your geometry. Uh, best thing to do is just to get it to under scan rather than over scan so you don't get this uh, this potential issue. You may find on this particular game that the um, uh, basically the points that you get that are in the top corners uh, don't display properly because they might be cut off or whatever so you know that is one downside to using a, a CRT TV. You do have to change the uh, geometry settings uh, depending on the resolution, but you know that's a small price to play. I think for uh, this type of image quality. But if we're just getting closer here. I mean, you know what I'm like with scan lines. But that is a, that's lovely, lovely sharp picture, and you'd never get anywhere near that on a on an LCD, obviously, because you can't get this 15 kilohertz natural uh, retro look but you can obviously on a CRT TV so uh, even by connecting uh, your PC to it if you set up MAME correctly so that is MAME and finally we have a uh, Super Nintendo emulator so this is uh, F-Zero and, and again it, it looks exactly the same as what you'd expect to look if it was original hardware you got the native scan lines there, everything's the right resolution it, it's it's just absolutely mint and and if you've got the facility to actually do this through a, a CRT a TV and you're into your emulation this has to be the best way to do your emulation straight into a CRT TV and it just looks absolutely mint it really does so hopefully guys that's given you a bit of an insight to uh, what the ultimate SCART adapter is and and actually what it can do for you with the right uh, equipment uh, a PC and an appropriate emulator software.